after I finished and applied business process management, I reduced the IT budget from 10.1 million to 700,000 grand. That's a huge cut. That's great. why. Yeah. It's business process management because the process dictates the solution. Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Welcome uh, to the next episode of Process Pioneers. Uh, today I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with Rolf Schubert. Uh, he is a business process architect for one of the top five retailers in South Africa. Rolf, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So obviously I've given a very brief overview then of what you're doing, but I think it would be valuable for the audience um, to, I guess, have a bit more of a grid and framework for your experience and, and where you're coming from. Um, so maybe if you wanted to talk to us a little bit about where the, the interest in business process management first came from, and then I guess a little brief timeline or history leading up to where you are today. Okay. So my career actually started in the life insurance environment. And in the life insurance, I worked myself up from normal administration and I went into what they call the business solution department. And that's where I was exposed mainly to business analysis. So then I done the business analysis diploma, accredited and did all the required courses for that. But that's where I started to realize the strength and the power of business processes. Right. And this is very important that for me, business processes is a key fundamental thing because stra strategy drives business process and business right. process drives systems. And what a lot of people don't understand that with a business process, the activities you execute is what is your business about. So business process and business equals for me one another. So this is where it started to bite me. I started to enjoy it. It is enormous fun. Fun, yes, it's fun, but it's it's, it's hard work and you've got to be very careful in how you deal with things. Right, right. Yeah, I think um, from the pe different people that I've been interviewing, um, there, there is definitely a, a certain, I guess, um, type of person that, that I guess uh, clicks with process management and they've got a very process-centric mindset and, and way of looking at things. Yes. Yeah, so yes. A process-centric mindset is important. It's very important. And, and you really got to understand what business processes really is. And what is the real definition of business process? There's so many things going around the world. Again, the power of business process must never be underestimated. Right. And that's the key thing. That's good. And obviously within an organization, uh, you've got your senior management, the decision makers, you, you've got the, uh, the different levels in that, I guess, hierarchical org chart. Um, but talk to me about who should, um, within an organization, who should care about um, having their pro managing their processes, improving their processes? Who, 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 um, who should care about that? That's a very interesting question. And I'm glad you're actually asking this question. In the most of instances, it unfortunately lies in the IT world, which it shouldn't be. It right. should be lying in the business. Right. So I believe very strongly that the business should own their business processes. Yes. But don't expect the business to own their business processes if you haven't got important stakeholders like your auditors aligned with you. Okay. So whenever you start doing and going to business processes, make sure you pull in your auditors and your risk people in. Why? There's a key component of any business which is into auditing and risk. So right. the auditors always want to know how the process is executed. The risk always, people always want to know which is the risk. The last point is finance department. So for us, where I work now, I made sure that before we even designed the business process option, before we even did any implementation, I made sure that the finance core executives, the risk core executives, and the auditors core executives are included. And as a matter of fact, I was very fortunate in the retail where I'm working at, we even included that our external auditors. Right. And even the external auditors, which are in the international companies, actually complimented us and said, this is one of the most thorough, detailed business process framework, architecture, and a document that we generate out of the two that, that we've done. And so by getting that on board, it's very important. If you think you can do it on your own, if you can think you can do it out of IT, no. IT is also a key role player. 
because the solution must conform and support the business process. So I'm not saying they second it, but part of the key, but the three key components is making sure that they buy. Once they've bought in, it's a much easier access. Right. Okay. And when trying to get um, buy-in from those key stakeholders, what, what are some of the, um, uh, do you find that you're ever, I mean, it might be, different for you than maybe say an independent consultant that's working in half a dozen organizations every year. But um, are you, are you facing any resistance or objections to, to the documentation of processes or the improvement? Yes, yes you, you, you will, you will, when you're in the business process world, you will always have resistance. Now the reason for me for the resistance has got to do a lot with past history. And I think when, I, when we start just quickly discussion, one of the key, key things is when we're talking about business process re-engineering or business process improvement, a lot of consultants tend to go to the business and say, I will map you as is. Once I've got you as is, I will get to the to be. But the as is is this huge bill of normally millions. Why? And immediately when you talk to people, I have been exposed to this. So, you have resistance. Right. The important part is when I go into business, I always ask them, give me the one area where your biggest problem at the moment is. Right. Your biggest problem. Not your not your lowest problem. Your biggest problem. Where is your biggest waste? Right. right. So if you tell me my biggest waste is in supply chain, I go in there, I analyze it. Currently, the way that we work in the retail, I have to be very honest with you, is we have developed a very peculiar methodology, which I'm actually speaking to one of our people that we are busy, which we use their tool to model in. But um, we, we tend to go in, within two days, we find the root cause. Um, and within that, we actually document it. We do a minimum of eight to 10 operating procedures in one day. Right, right. And then it's one person alone. It's not two consultants, it's not three consultants. And within a week, we exactly know exactly what is the non-value items and what's not the money. And we, we, we manual oversee. So we quickly get to the course. And just recently, about three weeks ago, we had one thing and we found the root course and it actually showed that the loss is quite a few million and not one or right. two million. So, uh, there's a lot of embedded value, but you always have resistance. But focus on the real root problem and what's the biggest problem. Right. right. And let, let fix facts speak. Don't try to say, I know everything. No. Go in. Make your hands dirty. Go show them. Yes. Facts prove. That's good. And when you're looking for this root problem or, or their biggest pain point, do you find that um, most organizations are um, aware of their, their uh, I guess, the big, biggest areas of improvement? Because I guess there would be some organizations that um, there would be huge areas of um, opportunity, but they wouldn't even be aware of it. Yes. Oh. To answer that question is going to take me quite long now, but, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, um, I think, not I think, I know that the business knows where they want to move to, okay? But because there's a, there's a strategy, there's a strategy that, try, that drives the business processes, a lot of time there's nobody that helps them to move from the strategic level to the business process level. Right. And a lot of time the people jump from the, from the strategy level and they go immediately to the solution component, which is the system component, okay? Mm -hmm. And they forget about the business process. So a lot of times, a lot of things get lost. A lot of times, the people immediately want to tend to move to the solution component and buy, buy that. So they miss a lot of good uh, uh, improvements. Um, and, and I can give you a good example is, for example, workforce management. You've got a lot of systems to it. A lot of people go and tend to buy the system because the system says, I give you all of these processes. The same is for SAP. SAP has got a lot of embedded processes, but it's business system processes. It's not business processes. Yeah. There's a difference between. So right. you miss a lot of things. And then there's a lot of waste. And the people wonder, but why do I why do I spend so much money? You know? And 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 that's why it's important that 
when you develop and when you put the architecture together, there must be a synergy between the organizational structure and your business processes. This whole thing we sat down in plan, buy, move, sell. I'm sorry, I don't want to move, use SAP. Very good components, very good process view, but you can't go in the retail company and say plan and poof and more. Plan is in commercial plan, it's all over. With it, you know, so you've got to be very careful and you're missing a lot of things. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Now for an organization that maybe has a very low BPM maturity at the moment, um, obviously looking forward at, at um, embarking on that BPM journey, it's, it's not as simple and easy as flicking a switch and then tomorrow the, there is a, a robust BPM framework in place. Um, but I guess the question that the that senior management would have is 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 the um, is that cross functional view that BPM provides in an organisation is it yes. worth the effort? Um, obviously, it could be a six month um, exercise. It could be an exercise that goes for a couple of years. And the question they would be asking is, um, well, we understand, we can appreciate that. Where we might be looking at our organization from that org chart hierarchical perspective. Is that cross functional view that BPM allows for, is it worth the effort? Yes, it is worth the effort. But now I have to bring in the process of architecture in, in my perception. Please, this is my perception now. Right. Okay. For me, that if you design your business processes to try to get to the cross functional view so that the executives and the senior management can understand the dependencies on the cost function view. Your process architecture, for me, should consist out of quite a few levels. We, the, the first two levels should describe you um, what I call the high-level division of the company. Okay? And then through the high-level division of the company, you say, but which are the main processes? Now, the main process for me then should be describing the functions within each of these divisions. Right. So once you've got that layer down, you immediately, very quickly, have got this one view where the people can, can see and understand. That's why, for example, if, I, if the executive director of, let's say, supply chain wants to make a change, he immediately can see, but hang on, this is the executive view for architecture. This is, oh, I, I need to take commercial into consideration. Oh, but I need to take retail store operations into it. So you, you, you've got to bring these worlds together. Now, the, the thing which becomes very interesting, if your process architecture is correctly designed and you have good synergy and this way of, of, of designing it, then you start with the bottom where you have your lowest level, which is your standard operating procedure level. From your standard operating procedure, you go to your activity level. Then you go to your sub process level. And then go, you go to your process level. But now you see, when we start at the top of the architecture, we talked about the macro process, which we said that it describes our level of vision. Then you've got the function. So this is when it starts bringing these worlds together. Yeah. So that when you go in, don't go in. Please don't go in and say, I need to model everything. That is not true. You yeah. need to build it over the years. Don't go and spend millions and millions for as is modeling. You don't need that. You really honestly don't need that at all times. Start identifying, which is your key. But if your architecture is solid and people have approved the architecture and they've seen how it works, it is much easier. You will still have resistance, my friend. You will still have, because executives change, people change. Everybody's got personal views. Right. But then you have the facts. The story in, in, in South Africa sometimes say proof lies in the pudding. Guess what? If this pudding is mixed correctly, you have the proof. And if you have the proof, you can show to them. To give you a very good idea, please just bear with me and then I'll conclude this answer to this question. Mm -hmm. If you design it correctly, like we have done, initially, we had, in the supply chain, we had six business analysts working in modeling. And we did it all in visual at that stage. Okay? Then we said, but this is not working for us because we've got to change continuously. And when you want to update your visual, you've got to continue to do that. So that's when we went to a modeling tool. And we can later talk about that if there's time for us. But where it took us in generally, it took us from nothing in visual, it took us anything from eight, no, yeah, from nine 
do 13 working days. Right, wow. Right? We got it down to eight hours. That's huge. Eight hours. Okay. And guess what? When we did it originally, the cost cost us over three million rand. When we did the whole revamp on the national and we standardized the process, that same process worked, only cost us 700,000 rand. Wow. Just look at the saving. So nobody can say to me that that's, it is true, it works. But you've got to make sure your architecture is correct. Right. Your architect, and, and the architecture that I'm using is, is the architecture a lot of people are using. Okay. Yeah. But people tend to go full business process and they don't bring the synergy in. You're always going to buy the executive. So you can always go back to the executive. They, can, they always have this view. That view is not hidden. The view is there. Right. And in focus on the core, there are still some processes that we have not documented. And guess what? We're not going to document if it's not a priority. Mm. We document what's important. Yes. In retail world, we, I come from one of the things, we had to go to centralized distribution. So you focus on that. But let me not, I think I've explained quite good solid enough in that perspective. <laughs> now, obviously, you're mentioning there the value that BPM can provide. I mean, I guess that the cost savings that is um, po that's possible. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about that even further, talking about the, the return on investment for um, process management or effective process management, because that's really what senior management's going to be um, asking is, is if we're going to invest time, effort, energy, resources into this, um, well, what's the value that we're going to see out of it? What's the return on, invest and on investment that we should be expecting? Yeah, this is, this is one of those difficult questions which I think a, a lot of people have different opinions and, the, and views about. Right. Um, when I started the, the, the last exercise on the VPN journey, I was confronted with, with this question. I said, but what is the return on investment? Okay. So then I went back, and, 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 and don't take me wrong, I went back and said to the executives, good, what is your strategy? Okay. We, we either want to improve, improve the way of working. Is it at a cost or at a lower cost? Now, I want to improve the ways of working, but at a lower cost. So then I align with the strategies. Then I take the things, and again, you have to take an example in the business, take it fine. This is the problem in this business. So where is the waste and what's the cost? And then I go in and I ask permission to take a two week to do a kind of a root course. Once I've got a root course, it's okay, fine. Let's use this as an exercise. But you're hearing, I'm saying, I'm not going on hypothesis. I'm not going on what previous company has done. I'm focusing on that business now, what I need to do there to change it. Right. Where I came from, all right, in the life insurance, I had a similar environment. I focused on waste and cost. Yes. And IT cost. After I finished and applied business process management, I reduced the IT budget from 10.1 million to 700,000 per annum. That's a huge cut. That's great. Why? Yeah. It's business process management because the process dictated the solution. So where everybody was trying to do and manage the thing with the system, it was the wrong thing to do. So ROI, whenever you're in a discussion, make sure with that business. And, 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 and that's where I a lot of strong feel that a lot of the consultants come with this hypothetical that got these very knowledgeable pack of slides. A has done this, B has done this, C has done this. There's all these white papers. Mm. It's all wonderful good. Mm. But if you're not prepared to make your hands dirty and show one, just one small area in the business, what's the ROI? Very little people will believe you. But yeah. once you've got one thing, the big problem, and you've got the ROI in place. Yeah. And so far, I must be honest, um, normally, my, for my perception, um, if you apply BPM correctly, um, the minimum saving on operational would be anything between 3.25 and 7%, taking operational costs away. But in some areas, I've even seen it to go as high as 60 70 percent wow um it depends in which area so one's got to be very careful and that's why i'm saying it depends in which area true 
So there are allies in the proof of the pudding we but what you're currently on hand with. And 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 don't try to use a lot of white papers and say this is why you need to go for it. Get your hands dirty, take a two, three week, go in. And if it if it needs be, do it at no cost. Right. Um because the, I don't have a problem with doing it cost. Mm. Like that one uh, exercise I previously referred to. We did it at absolutely no cost. Right. And the company that helped me at that stage, we did it at no cost. So when the executive saw the ROI, they said, whoa, whoa, whoa. So if I'm going to spend now 800000 you're going to give me $6 million. I said, yes. Okay, fine. So give me a plan. So we gave them a plan. And we, every month, we measured our success all the time. Wow. That's crazy. Now, talk to us a little bit about, I guess, you've obviously got, obviously got um, incremental improvement. Um, when, when talking about business process management, you've got some organizations that um, they'll have their processes documented, but they'll just sit there and, and gather dust, so to speak. Um, and they won't be looked at, they won't be managed, they won't be improved. But if we're, if we're looking at improving your business processes, you've obviously got... Um, the incremental improvements that can be made, but you've also got those, I guess, radical innovations that maybe is on a project basis. Um, but talk to us a bit about those two areas of improvement and um, when they are necessary. Okay. The important here is that a lot of time, um, the business process, and I need to just give you one example, then I can give it. The business process is always the one. The business procedure is always the how. Right. So the what right. will tell you and the procedure will feed into how you're going to execute the what. Now, if your business process is quite active all the time, it is important that as you document the business process document, when you document all the other things, you like the procedure, like the time that there's always that synergy, making sure that there's synergy between your business process system and your whole solution and even your your, your HR profiling. So keeping it live, keeping it live, going from a small to an incremental. And I think the, the most recent example is again the supply chain. You started off very small, incremental change, very small, very small change when you're going to say, we just want to fix this. Mm. All of a sudden, when they saw me fixing the speaking, they said, wow, but hang on. Now we can take it from all of the other areas as well. Right. So then we had to pull in the whole inbound, the whole outbound, and everything. Then what is very important, if you want to move to the big incremental, remember what I said initially, you have to make sure you have your risk people on board. You have to make sure you have your auditors on board. Yes. You need to make sure that you have all the... Now, when I started with that, because the business process drives the technology, we all know business process around people. So guess what we did there? We pulled human resources in. We said to human resources, guess what? We are now going to look at, this is now the big incremental. We are now going to look at the people side. Right. So when we put the business processes one side, we got an HR representative. And when we done the HR representative, we actually realized that a lot of the responsibility doesn't sit in the job profile. But you hear what I'm saying? It's yeah. not by one. It's not. It, it's about putting everybody in the world. This yeah. is how you keep it alive. That's why when HR now wants to change the job profile, they don't do it without the process. And they make sure that it's all there. So, so you've got to work it together. And that's where you start small, incremental becomes huge and big. But the benefit is enormously. And now, if they... And, and, and we've actually... Huh, yeah, I can say this. I've developed what I call a business development life cycle, similar to the software development life cycle. Right. And I'm actually busy writing a book about it. And making sure how the business development life cycle and software development life cycle is, is integrated. And that helps us enormously. But there's a little bit of a secret behind that, that we can have another day on a discussion if you want to. <laughs> That's so really good. Now, you mentioned before we got into the interview, you were talking about how um, the, I guess, the realm of business analysis, um, they don't place enough value on process. 
Um, talk to me a little bit about that or talk to us a little bit about that and what, what you mean by that. Um, in, in, and then I guess uh, going from that, what does process analysis look like moving forward into the future? Yeah, thank you very much. So my, if I look at the business analysis and, and, and we're looking at the business analysis community, Within business analysis sits multiple roles. I think I once, once attended a session where they said there's something like over 60 different roles. And, and, and if I looked at the roles, the process analysts didn't really feature as much. So, and when we started this exercise, I aligned a lot with the International Institute for Business Analysis, and I even did the accreditation. Um, and, and, but I started stepping a little bit away from it because I still believe um, I'm still a qualified business and I've still done anything, but my strength lies in the business process and I know what I can achieve in the business. So the IBA tended to look away, not strong on the business process side. There was always this te technology side and the solution side to it, but you have a system solution, you have a process solution. I have seen in the last chain last year or two, that there is becoming a more stronger emphasis on, 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 on business processes. But I wish the process custodian world like myself and the BA and the IBA will start working closer because we don't really understand, not everybody understands the power of business process management. And, and, and why do you need to split a process analyst and a business analyst, for example? Right. What is the real difference between a business analyst and the process analyst. Mm. Sadly, there is a difference mm. because the business analyst looks at the process and the system. The process analyst mainly looks at the process on hand, what's on the operations. And that's why in the way our work, we, we split our BA community into a process analyst, which we put in the business and the business analyst that sits in IT. Now that way you can also reduce quite a considerable amount of cost. Yes. So yes, it's an evolving world. But what we did is we created what we call is we created our own business analysis community and, and, and our own competency. And one of the key knowledge areas in our, in our framework is very strong business process management. And it's a key role player. And I can see a lot of time when new PAs come in. Uh, I've learned, I haven't learned this. Why must I do this? You know, and, and then you get wow. resistance from the BAs. Right. And when they start realizing the power that there is, you know, okay, then you start getting the buy. So it's, it's an evolving world. But yes, I, I totally believe that there needs to be a stronger focus on the international analysis, the IBA, on the yeah. business process management. I know that I've started spending on it, but still for me, it's not where it should be. That's my opinion. Right, right. And, and then one other topic that I think would be quite interesting um, at, in today's climate um, with obviously COVID-19, uh, it's disrupting a lot of organisations. Um, for some organisations, it's wiped them out altogether. Um, for, for other organisations, they're thriving in the current season because it's working to their advantage somehow. So um, talk to us a bit about, I guess, what we're going through at the moment. Obviously, both of us were working from our home offices, um, which is why we are where we are. And um, talk to us a bit about how BPM play, can play a, a significant and valuable role um, in, in, a, in quite a disruptive climate like we're going through at the moment. Because BPM, because your processes are visible, okay, and because your processes can be seen by a lot of people, so you know what your input, you know what your output, you know what your governing attribute, your business processes, not only the process visible, but the business rules are visible. But so important also is that those enabling attributes, like the procedure, the SOPs, the system management, because all of that is very visible, okay. Getting into a crisis you have now, because it's visible, it's right in front of you, you can quickly make good, solid decisions. And because when applying BPM correctly, you know which role has what responsibility. And as long as your business process document has that documented, it's really easy to switch from A to B, B to C, C to D. And right. that's why once you've got that, you can actually pull out 
like we were using it too, we can pull out the reports, but these are the responsibilities. And guess what? It's even on HR field, so they can also see it. So it's then much easier to switch things around and say, but I'm not going to do this or I'm not, but you know what? I can do this from now because I'm not dependent on these and this. So, that. so it's very easy. And even, and, 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 and let's be honest, with the COVID-19, you are a little bit in a in disaster mode. And that's why important in BPM. And that's the one thing which I feel uh, we still sometimes are neglecting. In. I, I have to admit that. When you model a process, make sure you always know what's the business continuity for that process. Right. If a disaster hits you, what you need to do. A lot of process analysts don't do that. We tend to do it on our side. As I said, we're not fully there yet. But you've got to, you've got to be able, when you design a business process, make sure you have a business continuity for it as well. Because your system might be down. How are you going to implement that? So, yes, it's visible. Everyone can see the business process documents is live. You know what you have. You have a virtual copy, but you also have a manual copy. So once you've got all of that and you have to look at it, it's much easier to deal with scenarios like we have at, on hand at the moment. That's great. And um, for someone that's listening right now that maybe they, they're within an organisation that doesn't have a very, um, I guess, mature BPM framework or, or um, focus, um, but they want to learn more. They, they, they've, they've listened um, to this interview and obviously we can only fit uh, a very little amount into a 30-minute um, conversation. Um, but what, where would you point them or what direction would, would, would you advise they go if they want to learn more about BPM um, and understand how it can add value to their organisation? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question to ask. Because there's so many things around the world and so many books and so many leaflets, right? I would start with one thing. Understand what's the real definition of a business process. Once you understand what the real definition of a business process and you want to make a difference, try to understand the synergy and drive, try to understand, remember that table that I spoke to you, stage of process and system and making sure that that is all in synergy. So going to a specific company, they, they are wonderful people. They are, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to mention a lot of names now because I don't want to say go to them or go to them. There's a lot of world in the, in the internet. Go into the internet, go in the research, but take what's important for you for that specific circumstance mm. and build yourself a type of a framework. Get a self-discipline on process. When you talk process, understand process is the what? Procedures, the how. I once did an analysis, so I'm citing the point here, is when I ask for 80 business analysts, what's it, is the process, the what, the procedure, the how? And even when we interview now, about 60% of the BAs fail that test because they say the procedures, the what, and the process is the how, which is completely wrong. Right. So you've got to understand that. You've got to understand so use the internet, use this a lot of knowledgeable documentation, but take out what's important for you and don't overcomplicate it. Don't go into what we call in the BA world analysis paralysis. You can quickly go into process analysis paralysis. Right, right. Be very careful that. Get your structure out. And you know what? You might think I'm funny now, but when I started all of this, I used some of that on my own life, my personal life, and said, but if I have architecture in my life, you know, it fits together. And it's very really easy how you can test in your own world. You don't need a big business. And what I did is, and that's the last thing I want to conclude with is, what I did is I offered free services to one or two very small businesses to test some of my own things. Right. So I gave them free advice for free. They don't pay for it. But it's in, interesting to see the power. Then you start to understand it. You've got to make your hands dirty, my friend. There's no reason just going on the internet and searching, making all these beautiful, wonderful slides, and you haven't had your hands dirty. Make your hands dirty so that everybody understands exactly where you're going with this. Once you've done that, you'll be surprised. Any individual, you'll be surprised at the power that lies behind what you want to achieve. And there's a huge people, really, um, you know, there's a huge, huge opportunity to make a big difference. Process, the power that lies in processes is completely underestimated. 
Um, just listen, I cannot share too much on this, but what I can share is that for a very critical component in the retail environment, um, by doing and applying from the bottom up approach, within two days, we quickly found that um, a lot of things was done wrong because you know why? That governing attribute, the business rules, was relying on unit standards was 10 years and older. 10 years and older. Right. You want to improve. You've right. not done your work that you should have been doing. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of things. Yes. People, take what you have, but make your own thing. And making your own thing stay within the framework. Business process management is this huge world. Yes. Get it down to what makes the difference for you. That's amazing. That's great. Well, Rolf, it's been a pleasure uh, having this conversation today. I'm sure that the community or the people listening have been learning a lot, gleaning a lot from you. Um, so I just want to uh, thank you for joining us here and um, blessing us with your knowledge on the topic of BPM. Thank you very much. And people understand the power in business processes is under estimated. You can make a huge difference. And you can take a lot of cost out, a lot of cost, and you can bring efficiency. That's the most important part.